In the meantime, tonight we've been wading through confusing signals all day on whether there's an agreement to end the Senate walkout in Salem. And because it's such a big deal and the work or lack thereof impacts all of us, that Senate walkout is our big story tonight. There was an optimistic mood at the Oregon State Capitol today that the walkout would end, but so far tonight, no chance. It's still on. The six week boycott is the longest in state history, and it's the second longest of any state in the U.S. behind a six month walkout in Rhode Island that was 99 years ago. So yeah, we're out there. There were rumblings this afternoon that a press conference was coming to announce a deal, and then there wasn't, and then it was back and forth and back and forth again. We do know the Democrats and Republicans, the leadership have been meeting and negotiating to try to come to some sort of compromise, but nothing's come of those talks yet. Earlier this week, OPB reported through sources that a potential deal would see Democrats making major concessions on bills concerning abortion and guns. The first is House Bill 2002. That's the one that deals with abortion and gender affirming care. OPB reports that a compromise there would be getting away from giving girls under the age of 15 the absolute right to get an abortion without their parents' permission or knowledge. Instead, a doctor could decide the parents do not need to be notified if it would endanger the girl. The other bill that would be drastically changed would be a big one on gun safety. House Bill 2005 sets strict penalties for the creation or transfer of untraceable guns. Those are known as ghost guns. It would also raise the age to buy certain guns from 18 to 21 and would allow for more limited concealed carry rights. But OPB reported this week that a compromise could gut that bill to only include the provisions on ghost guns. Again, those are just some possibilities of the compromise. Both sides staying very quiet today and this afternoon and this evening even on negotiations. So it's very possible that none of those options bear fruit, but that's what's been floating around out there. So it's also possible that it all happens. One firm update that we do have for you tonight concerns the quorum rules in the Oregon Constitution. That's the law that allows for walkouts to have this paralyzing effect in Salem that we've seen over the past six weeks. Today, more than 40 Democratic senators and, rep and representatives signed on to this resolution. If passed, it would ask voters to change the two-thirds quorum requirement to a simple majority instead. We've previously shown that Oregon is just one of four states in the country to require two-thirds of lawmakers in either chamber to be present for a quorum to allow business to get done. Those are the states in blue there. 45 other states in, or in orange require a simple majority. And Massachusetts makes it far too complicated to even really explain it to you. Now, this latest resolution in Salem has little to no chance of passing this session. That's because there are only 11 days left in the session. And even if the walkout ends, this bill probably won't see the light of day because of all the budget bills that would require immediate attention. One of the sponsors of the resolution told OPB today that the issue could be taken up during the short session next year or potentially become a petition to allow the measure onto the 2024 ballot. Either way, it's clear that Measure 113 was not the walkout deterrent that advocates had hoped it would be, and the quorum change would be an effective method to prevent walkouts in the future if voters pass it. And one final note on the goings on in Salem this week. Remember how the Senate Democrats voted to fine the senators who are walking out by $325 a day? Well, that's the average daily amount that the lawmakers are getting. This week, apparently as a gesture of goodwill, Senate President Rob Wagner has gaveled in the Senate sessions, but purposely did not do a roll call. That's important because that means a quorum was not even called for, meaning the GOP senators were not fined for preventing a quorum this week. Add up the past three days, and that decision by the Senate President is saving the GOP senators nearly a thousand bucks.